Hi, I'm Michelle Antle, and I'm a field training coordinator at the Kentucky Autism Training Center. Recently, we have uploaded some information and materials to our website to better assist you at addressing the social emotional learning needs of your kids. Many of the resources you will find are downloadable or printable, but many of the strategies listed are things that you can do on the fly at home when it happens in real time in the moment. So some of those strategies are just thinking out loud, problem solving in front of your kids, labeling emotions as they occur. Wow, mommy's really sad that we don't get to go to the park today. It is okay and emphasize that it's okay to feel differently in a situation. Everyone has emotions and everyone can respond and feel differently. Also emphasize that you can have multiple emotions in regards to one situation, so I can be happy and sad at the same time. These emotions are very abstract and complex and make it difficult for our concrete learners to really understand what it is that we're trying to communicate. So any opportunity that we can label an emotion is an opportunity to break through and help them to understand better. So you might say, wow, you look sad. You were crying because your toy truck broke or you look confused. Did something happen on the phone when talking with your friend? So the important thing is to emphasize that there are also um, outcomes that we can help change. So when I feel sad or happy, what can I do to make myself feel better or um, to escape the situation? Some of these interventions are things called social stories or social narratives. A social narrative is a script in which defines um, a social situation and teaches a replacement behavior. This strategy is a pre preventative kind of a strategy in that it requires a lot of work on the front end. So knowing up front, what is the behavior? What do you anticipate is gonna happen? And then thinking, what do I want that outcome to be instead? So for example, if I have to go to the grocery store and I know there's gonna be a really long line at the checkout, perhaps I can write a social narrative about what's gonna happen and what I can do while I wait for my groceries to be checked out. So maybe it's that I can look at one of the magazines, I can watch mommy's phone, I can count the number of items that are in my cart, um, anything that's going to have a positive redirective outcome. It's also really important to praise the child or student or individual um, for using those replacement strategies when we see that happen. Now, it's preventative in that we do not wait until we get to the end of the checkout line to tell them, oh yeah, by the way, you can do this, this, or this. Preventative means that we're going to tell them ahead of time so that they can remember, oh yeah, this is what I can do. So maybe you read the social narrative before you go into the store and then remind them of what those replacement behaviors are um, five or so minutes before you get to the checkout line. Then that way, they can hopefully remember those strategies and use those strategies. If they are upset and flailing and crying and, and they're not gonna be able to hear a word that you're saying or able to process, and quite frankly, we as the adult can't process either because we're stressed out about what's going on around us at that time as well. Many of these stories need to be individualized. So make it about the kid, include their name, include their interest, anything that's going to draw them into that social story and greatly increase the chances that they are going to um, demonstrate those positive behaviors. So these are just some food for thought. If you need additional information, please feel free to contact any of us at the center and we'll be happy to help.